What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Randy here with RTS Mobile Gaming bringing you an awesome video today. We are playing the Lord of the Rings Rise to War and in today's video we are talking about some fights against Komodo that I just had here against Chaos Server 115 Season 6 folks. Komodo just came in and punched me directly in the face with two commanders. Actually I punched him. So we're going to take a look at that, uh, those fights right now. Like and sub, here we go. Right into the combat, folks. First off, we're going to talk about Balin, okay? We're going to be taking a look at Balin versus Sauron. A lot of pew-pew going on here. Super-duper exciting, okay? So the first thing we're going to take a look at is Sauron's build. This is a very high respect level Sauron. This is 22, uh, 29 out of 29 into the bottom R0. 29 out of 29 into the top, uh, I mean, into the R3 middle. And then uh, 18 out of 29 into the top R0 tree, giving him a great deal of damage output. He does not use the madness here, which makes him more reliable of a commander in PvP. Now it's just a focus damage and healing matchup uh, with a little bit of madness thrown in from the helmet, but it's not no longer reliant on the madness that comes with Ring Bearer. Uh, I do think that uh, I'm a, I am a big fan of the ring bearer skill, as you'll see from my Isildur fights. Uh, however, I can definitely appreciate the fact that Sauron is a little bit more averaged out and well-rounded against all the million people with anti-madness helmets like myself. Okay, so in this report, like I said, we got Sauron 535 focus. We've got an Easterling spear here with anti-mounted on it. We've got Great Plate of the East. Okay, HP. We have HP and Madness on the helmet. We've got focus and healing over there. He's going to have a total of plus 9 HP from the equipment. He'll have plus 3 damage from the equipment. And overall, a fairly pew-pew build, okay? Unit-wise, he's got the war chariots, he's got the dragoons, and the halberdiers. Okay, I like it. All right. Balin. You probably remember my Balin build from the other day when I did my other video against uh, my good buddy Alexi. So here we go. We have Retaliate Balin right here with plus 7 attack to his units, plus 9 HP to his units, right? Plus 9 HP, plus 7 attack, plus 4 defense. Really not a lot there. <laughs> uh, and 335 might. I would like to get the might higher, but it is where it is. We have Hysteria plus HP over here. We have Dwarven Damage plus HP over here. For the build-wise, I do not like the top R0, bottom R0, and R5 ball and retaliate build. Do not even talk to me about that build. I prefer this hybrid build where Ballin actually deals decent damage in conjunction with his units. And I feel like that build is, again, just like Sauron without madness, is going to be more uh, prepared to fight any units with a lot of focus damage and healing. Um, same thing here. Okay? So, a nice well-rounded commander. A lot of damage coming from Sauron's units. My units put out some good damage with some healing. Uh, his units put out uh, some fantastic damage from the Halberdiers here, which is crazy because they're um, infantry. And then uh, some good healing and damage from Sauron himself, okay? Let's take a look at the report, folks. Here we go. Get excited. Like and sub. That's right. All right. Round one. Here we go. Right away in round one, we have Sauron hitting for 3k, the Dragoon's hitting for 4k, my Retali hitting for 5k. So now it's an 8 versus 5k offset here, right? Uh, you basically have a 3k differential. I come in with a 5500 heal and I offset that. And now I am ahead by 1500 damage in the first couple instances of the fight. I love it. All right. War Chariots with the Scythe. Okay, he's starting to pull ahead here as round one progresses. Some Madness, very nice. Madness helped me out. The War Chariots uh, were attacked by their own Halberdiers. Good focus damage from Sauron. Okay, and then no auto attack from the Guardians because they do have Madness, all right? Woo, that's a lot of damage from Trembling Strike. This is what's called a lot of damage from Trembling Strike, folks. So just picture how much damage this Sauron might be dealing if I had three units in my march and he could deal maximum damage with Overload and all these AoE abilities. Because he's only fighting one target, his damage is already cut in half. That's one of the advantages of fighting with a single stack, right? Sometimes you fight like a Yisra that double debuffs you and you get exploded on. Sometimes you fight a Sestaro or a Sauron and, uh, you know, your having less, less units benefits you. All right. Here in round three, big old focus damage from Black Arts, anti-heal. 
Now listen to this, because of the speed on the Guardians, they are going to actually get impacted by this anti-heal for almost two entire rounds. Since Sauron attacks first in round three, and Guardians will attack last in round four, you're going to have basically two entire rounds of anti-heal, even though Black Arts only affects one real round. Interesting to know, if you didn't realize that. Soul Siphon hitting me. Good healing from Soul Siphon there. Then we have Sustain coming in hot and heavy. Okay. Um, and then here we go. Guardians beset by Madness are not able to heal themselves anyways because they're under Black Arts. Dragoons coming in, getting punched back in the face, directly in their face. Balin coming in with Whirlwind, ladies and gentlemen, punching these guys directly in the eyeballs here. Two hits, one of the Dragoon, one of the Halberdiers, 19,000 damage, 18... 1,350 damage on the dot, actually. That's kind of fun. Oh, oh, 360. I can't, I can't do math. Leave me alone. Okay. A lot of damage. A lot of damage. This round four coming up is the big one. Ooh. These Halpadiers are really hitting. They're really hitting pretty good. So check it out. One anti-heal. Two anti-heals. Keep in mind, each heal is about 5k. We'll just round it to 5k up and down. Okay. Two times now I haven't gotten auto attack because of Madness. And the auto attack from these guys hits decently, right? 1700, it's pretty bad, never mind. <laughs> All right, so two auto attacks missed, two heals missed there in uh, uh, round three. Okay, here we go, round four. Trembling Strike is back with a vengeance to punch me in the face again. Very nice, Komodo with that focus damage. I can only imagine if I had multiple units. And here comes Balin's big old damage puncheroo in round four, ladies and gentlemen. He's got heavily wounded with an anti-heal on the Dragoons. 13k, and then we have a 20k hit on the Dragoons again uh, from all in, meaning these guys really got the whoopie doo on them. They took about 33k damage, 32,500 damage plus or minus from Balin in round four after Balin's already lost uh, a third of his troops. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Okay? Really playing well. The halberdiers are continuing to chunk away. You don't need to see the rest of this report. You understand what happened. You can tell it was a good fight. There was a lot of back and forth. Um, Sauron was able to disable two heals in round three. That is 10,000 healing I missed out on. Uh, but overall, very nice fight. Balin against Sauron. I love it. Next report we're going to look at, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a sealed door versus the Witch King. This is a level 47, decently geared a sealed door, running a keeper build here. Okay, I'm running keepers. They are beautiful and glorious, and I love them. All right. Uh, they will be running with last alliance to mitigate any damage they receive. They'll be running with Great King and Enfeebled to increase damage output. And then on the top R0 tree, Ring Bearers will give them some evasion for physical damage. Uh, as well as Ring of Terror giving madness against the enemy units for the first two rounds, okay? The enemy I'm fighting against is an enemy Witch King running fantastic gear. He has a five-star five refinement reckoning. We've got an anti-burn damage chest piece right there. Helmet-wise, we have the Berserker's Gaze with Resolve of the Urukai. Okay, anti-stun. This is my favorite helmet for that, for sure, for Witch King. Uh, and then Orthanx Devilry with Pursuit. This is an interesting choice. Um, I don't, my only recommendation would be maybe swap this out for the Palantir of Orthanc Komodo if you have it, um, I don't know if you do or not, that'll give you plus three attack as well as tactical mark versus, uh, maybe you want the siege, I don't know, maybe you're doing some siege today. That's my only, my only recommendation on the gear is if you have a Palantir, it'll give you the plus three attack. All right, into the units and the skills, guys. So he's running bottom R0 trees, running middle R3 trees. He's got top R0 tree for anti-commander. Unit-wise, he's got 5,400 Alkies in here with max damage, pew, pew, pew. Okay, he does have the beautiful war drummers, which are going to give a cleanse every round. 35% chance to trigger a cleanse. And a plus 20% damage every round. So this is the big deal. Since they move faster than alchemists... Starting in round one, the Alchemist will receive that 20% damage bonus for the duration of the fight. And then he's keeping everybody alive with some taunt trolls, okay? So let's take a quick look at how this damage really panned out. It looks like I didn't get a whole lot of damage out before I got murked. Um, 
it is a tough it is a tough fight against enemy uh, alchemists with taunt trolls. That basically means I will not be able to punch the alchemists in the face until the taunt trolls are dead or round four, whichever comes first. Which means they're going to put out maximum damage plus 20% from the drummers with a cleanse against my units until round four potentially. All right, that's a big deal. 20 damage alchemist is a big deal. Okay. All right, here we go into round one, folks. Let's see what happens in rounds one and two. A sealed door is going to inflict Ring of Terror on all of the enemy units and the commander. Okay. All of the units and the enemy commander. You will see uh, War Drummers hitting with their own buff against the Swan Knights, reduced by 90%, getting a double strike on them due to Witch King's uh, double strike convener. Then we have the Alchemist, ladies and gentlemen, coming in with plus 20% damage since I'm not running an anti-burn damage chest. They really come in hot and heavy. I need an anti-burn damage chest. It's official. Okay, a lot of damage there. Then we have the Mountain Trolls, thankfully, attacking their own units. I love to see that. Witch King attacking his own units. I love to see that. So that's about 14,000 self-damage to his own. Maybe about 15,000 plus or minus self-damage to his own units here in round one. <laughs> Isildur is doing some self-damage himself. <laughs> Very good. Ah, oh, here's what did it. The Dunedains and the Keepers were both stunned in round one, ladies and gents, which means I'm missing out on a large amount of damage. There's a lot of damage that can happen in round one. Here in round two, plus 38.5% damage. Okay. We are going to see the Swan Knights get murked by the Alchemists. Okay. They're going to come in and punch the Dune Danes in the face next. Uh, this is 31,000 damage, mind you, after having a minus 90% against it. And that is because there's a 20% bonus from the War Drummers, and there is a. Um, 30% increased damage received buff that I am taking due to the Witch King. So this 90% is actually only a 60%, which means this would have been about an 80,000 damage roll unmitigated by Last Alliance. Okay? So 80,000 damage roll unmitigated by Last Alliance. Then you have minus 90 plus 60. So it's a total of minus, six, uh, minus 90 plus 30 equals minus 60. 60% of that's going to give you about 30k. And again, I'm just rounding, okay? So there is the damage right there. So more self-damage from the Mountain Trolls here in round two. At least they're helping me out a little bit. So now we're up to about 25,000 self-damage on the enemy uh, guys for Komodo here. Duna Danes, ladies and gentlemen, finally getting some damage off here in round two, hitting for 5k. These poor guys are almost dead. <laughs> and finally, Keepers coming in hot and heavy getting some good damage out in round two, about 33,000 damage. Round three, folks, Madness is gone. Um, madness is gone. The initiative and the double strike from the Witch King is gone. So you are going to see a little bit of an advantage on my side speed-wise. I will hit the Mountain Trolls before the Alchemists come in and punch me in the face. Mountain Trolls are now down. The Alchemists... Um, are going to come in here and hit the keepers for 42k. So, my biggest regret, guys, I think the two biggest reasons I'm losing this fight right now is because I don't have an anti burn damage chest to offset his um, respect three ring wraith ability. A and B, the mountain trolls had a bunch of self damage, but the alchemists were able to punch through with four attacks in the first two rounds, right? They didn't have any madness actually affect them. So I missed the opportunity to have the alchemists do some self damage. And we all know what it looks like when a witch king does self damage with alchemists. He immediately kills all of his other troops. So unfortunately, RNG got the better of me there, folks. We basically had a 35% chance per attack for the alchemists to attack their own units didn't happen unfortunately all right i mean that's the fight what else do you want to see that's the fight good fight komodo love you long time great uh fairly even fight i think balon versus sauron nice kill on my seal door love you long time like and sub folks randy out